Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma. I'm Nick, and today we are circling back to the spiritual detox and adding an addendum. Spiritual detox part four today, everybody. Five things that you can do to stay clean and clear. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. We just couldn't stop. Yeah, you're attached to that spiritual detox. <laughs> we have not detoxed enough. Yeah, well, it's. I think it's important. I think it's the source of all happiness too. I mean, the the detox of yuckiness is like we're we're more in happiness and flow. We get to manifest easier. We're kinder to people. It's a better place to be. It is. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just easier all the way around. Mm-hmm. And I believe that that connection is a really important part of our lives. It's the most important part of our lives. Yeah. I mean, the most important detox is the spiritual detox. Yeah. And and what inspired this for our listeners, what inspired this new part of the conversation or this addendum to the conversation is we were watching a video of Wayne Dyer. Yeah. And, And he had a cool way of putting it. I never really thought about it like this, but he called it corrosion. Corrosion of like... The intuitive line the or the hookup. Yeah, yeah, yeah spiritual, spiritual cord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good word. Corrosion. You can just see it and feel it. it's like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like how he, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, ooh, like you can just imagine like rust or like, oh, right. you, like all this stuff on it. And it's just so not fun. <laughs> so not fun. We don't get what we need and everything gets messy and sticky. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's how I think about mm-hmm. it. It's like mud or gunk or just, right. you know. Right. That's who, good. That you picked up it throughout, you know, throughout things and right. day and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I'm following his work a little bit more. I'm actually really inspired. You know, right. I think I hadn't really paid much attention before of kind of into my own thing. Uh, but his videos have been popping up and I'm I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you what are your thoughts? I, I think he's phenomenal too. I mean, we were sort of talking about how some of his story again when sadly when he was on the planet i'd watch bits and pieces but it was really after his death and just recently some of his work popped up and i was like he really knew amazing things and had the ability to speak it to i feel like most everybody yeah yeah very very simple universal language and and one of the most beautiful things i i feel like is his humility. Yeah, I agree. And when we look at spiritual detox, you know, what we really don't want at all is any kind of spiritual pride. So when I listen to him or do some readings or whatever, it's like, yeah, there's really an absence of pridefulness, Yeah, which is very refreshing. Uh, I got to tell you, I mean, that's one of the most inspiring things to Mm -hmm. me. It was really, I think, humbling to me Mm -hmm. to hear, to hear him talk about his his depressive state. Exactly. To know, own being in, hashtag human. What in his early sixties was, was that? I'm not sure yeah, when, but it was, was when he was like 62 or so the, the, you know, he'd split with his wife and yeah. all sorts of things that changed for him. And, and all of a sudden he finds himself in a depressive state. And exactly. Like, you know, I mean, I got to imagine like that's a really difficult place to be in for any spiritual teacher or anybody in that realm of mm-hmm. personal growth to really own that. Now, right. you know, I don't know whether he did or didn't in that moment in his life. But the fact that he was able to do it at a certain point and say like, wow, like I was freaking depressed and I knew it. You know, like that to me is like the ultimate humility. Like, like you said, hashtag human. I just think that's awesome. Yeah. And, and not, you know, it, it just shows that he wasn't in that superiority complex. Yeah. Of I'm better than everyone, which, you know, (laughs) whenever you come upon a quote unquote guru that says or makes feels that way, just turn around and run. Yeah, run, run far. Not your person. So we did some reading of his, we pulled from our own teachings and et cetera. And we came up with five really simple things to say, to do them and follow through. It might not be so simple, but really when you get the, the, the essence of each one, they're not difficult. It's really, what is challenging is the awareness 
to finding yourself in that moment. But once the awareness is there, if you're willing, the pivot is very fast. Yeah. And and especially when you understand the benefits, the pivot's even faster. I couldn't agree more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's always the real trick is catch, catching yourself in the act. Exactly. Um, you know, the first one I'd like to talk about Go for it. is from Don Miguel Ruiz, though, mm. is don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. Don't take anything personally. Yeah. It's not about you. Um, if you've never read The Four Agreements, I would highly recommend so good. that to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one that pops back through my, you know, through my reading list pretty pretty frequently, actually. Yeah. I'll pick that one off the shelf and I might not read the whole book, but I'll read one of the agreements and often the first one, which is like, don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. Life is so much easier <laughs> when we humans don't take things personally, isn't it? Well, I believe, you know, I was thinking about this in the context of Vedanta because that's the one that I always return to. You know, when I read Mm -hmm. these other things, I always filter Mm -hmm. it through that, that, like that mother, philosophy, the mother teaching, yeah. you know? <laughs> mother teaching. <laughs> I always filter it through that. And so to me, w- what this does is, is it helps you to regain your objectivity. And without objectivity, we will spin and take many things personally. Yeah. Yeah. You get really. And when is you're taking it personally, then you're in the drama. Right. It. You know, right. it's what this person said. It's what that person says. You are way down in the, in the weeds. It's really difficult to see what the higher ground is and you're stuck in a defensive state. Ugh. So it's either like an aggressive state of trying to prove yourself right yes. or that defensive state of like, ooh, you know, everything's trying to get me and everybody's, you know, after me. And it's like me, yeah. me and I, I, and it gets really into that kind really of Really sticky, thing. really heavy and just exhausting. Yeah, exhausting. That's the best. Completely. Way I mean, I'm sure totally exhausted. when all of us flash back to a time where we took something personally, I guarantee we were pretty exhausted. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And and think about think about how much of it's just made up stories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Assumptions. Right. Just things that's... layers. Like all of a sudden a story starts, a story yeah. starts, and then it gets bigger, and then it's like this B movie rolling in our heads, and it's not enjoyable and it's exhausting. Right. Right. And I think that's a big majority of it. And then I think another part of it is not the assumptions necessarily, but it's a misunderstandings mm-hmm. of what is actually happening. Right. Um, so it could, well, I guess you could chalk that under wrong assumptions as well. But mm-hmm. but it's really I think it's a different thing. It's like you're just you're misunderstanding the situation or you're not seeing the whole picture at all. So that's a lot of spent energy. And what happens if we look at sort of the field? And how this affects us bringing in what we want. When we think about those sorts of stories running in our head, taking things personally, mauling it over, having that noisy conversation of how everyone is doing something wrong to us or whatever, we focus on that. That sort of energy frequency expands. And then something else pops up. It's like a little seed that will attract another low vibe thing that shows up in our life. You know, maybe we drop something and break it, or maybe we get sick. Like there's, it just brings us into a low vibe, which will attract other things to happen in a low vibe. And before you know it, it's like the field has just sunk and we're not resonating. We're not vibrating. We're not at a frequency of what we desire that allows our life to be in flow. So it really does no good. And, you know, I think it's important too, Nick, to like not minimize how people feel. Things happen. Our feelings can get hurt. Sure. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's not to say be a robot and don't feel anything. I know it's always better for me when I examine, okay, do I really need to take this on? How is it going to serve me if I sit and pout or be angry or be upset or assume someone's trying to do something to me where they might not be thinking about me at all. Right. It, it's, uh, it gets really heavy, really fast. The state of exhaustion, right. Uh, really sets in because you're truly depleted. You know, you have maybe half as much energy to work with. Maybe half as if much. If you're lucky. Mm-hmm. And the, and what is there is just heavy and gunky and well, right. it's like the corrosion, you the know, corrosion, right it will it. corrode you. And how easy is it for you to stay connected to your spiritual, you know, higher spiritual components, if you're doing that. Not easy because the focus is on what's wrong 
in your world or what you're taking personally. That's right. Yeah. That's the function That's a of good corrosion. One. If you haven't read the book, Don Miguel Ruiz does an awesome job of really breaking it down in simple terms and putting it in a very beautiful perspective. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, so definitely recommend that. Good. Um, but at the end of the day, don't take it personally. Don't folks. take anything personally. No. It's not, not worth it. Personal. Life is too short. The second simple step out of our five simple steps. <laughs> I love how we thought this would be simple. Uh, self-inquiry. Okay. This is going straight back to Vedanta teachings for sure. And I was talking about this. I think I shared this with you before we got on the air, but I was talking about this in the prosperity code last night where I just said, if there's something in your life that you don't want or you don't like, examine what you invested to bring it in. What words did you invest? What thoughts did you invest? What actions did you invest to attract what's in front of you that you don't want? And the reason we want to look at self is because our, again, our energetic field, our presence, we are manifesting all the time. This is the real law of attraction. We're always bringing in what we're focused on, what we're talking about. So in order to pivot that, we really have to come clean with looking at what's happening right now that maybe I want to change or I do want to change. And then inquiring to self, what are the different thoughts that need to happen? What are the different words? What are the different actions that need to happen in order to uplevel what we're seeing around us? Mm -hmm. And that's when we get so many answers. Even when something almost like in crisis mode happens, wow, what what did I do to attract this? And it's not about judging ourselves. It's not about making ourselves bad or wrong. It is just inquiry. Just inquiry, purely objective, nothing mm -hmm. personal, right? Nothing personal, even with your own life. <laughs> now, I think it's interesting you use the word investment. And when I think about investment, when somebody's on a certain track and they're investing more and more thought, more and more effort down this track, which they think is the right track. And then, it, you know, sooner or later, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the writing's on the wall, so mm -hmm. to speak, like you can kind of feel it or sense it or perceive it, or, or maybe it's just super, super obvious. Um, but after you've invested that much into it, sometimes you can get kind of stuck in it, right? Like you start to defend it or start to be like, no, no, this must be right. Or I'm going to make it right. Or I'm going to will it through or something like that. It can be really difficult without the inquiry yes. to just, dis, you know, to really look at it and be like, this was a poor investment. I'm going to do something different. To change it. And, and also I use this word investment because investing isn't just money. We have to look at what it, what are we taking up mental real estate with? What are we taking up emotional real estate in ourself? What is taking up our spiritual real estate? So looking at all these things, that's when we understand our thoughts, our words, our actions really are an investment into our life. And it's to me, it's like any other investment. Okay, so if, you're, if you've got money in the stocks mm -hmm. and, and you see that stock and it's like tanking and it's a little bit down and, and you can be like pulling for it, like it's totally gonna do it, it's totally gonna do it and you wind up losing everything. And I kind of feel like like it's that kind of like you have to have the objectivity. That's where people lose major mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. in that is because they get they get invested. They get really invested in their decision and seeing it through. And then it's all gone before they know it. Right now, translate like that's money. All right. And that's a big deal to a lot of people. But that is nothing compared to your spiritual journey. It's nothing compared to your relationships in your life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all those, those are much higher stakes games. But I think a lot of times like people just don't take it as seriously. Right. Yeah. They don't understand that. Well, moving on for the third one, this has to do with the other as well. Mm -hmm. And it is really being concerned with what, you know, quote unquote, they want for you, mm -hmm. what other people want for you in your life. And I think this is really interesting. You know, this has come up, uh, certainly with the ultimate life tool mm -hmm. and the work that we do with that assessment for sure where it's like we look at that's the ch that's the challenge with human beings like you look at a human being like every single human being is entirely unique and you expect one to be like the other yeah and exactly you, you, know, you expect the father to be like the son the mother to be like the daughter and 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 every you know and just way down the line just like that just because they're in a certain position or they're a certain way, you expect them to be a certain way. And it's just not true. Every human being is unique. That's the chance. That, that's why hashtag human 
exist is because human beings do wild things and very unexpected and unpredictable things. And so just as we honor how other people are different, we've got to honor our own individualization. Is that what you're saying? And just really like face forward with our mission. Well, I think that's a big part of it. Now, Mm -hmm. the reason I say all that is to, is to say that, yes, there is, you have a unique way of doing things. You have unique things that drive you. You have a unique calling for yourself. You might not be the only one on the planet with that, but it's unique to you Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly in the way that you would go about it. And in our world and in our brains, the brain's like always trying to categorize things, to put it in its little box so I know where it fits and so I know what it is and so I know what to call it. And that, and then people, what happens though, is we do that to one another, right? We, we all do it to one another, right? You know, so it's healthy to own that right off the bat is to realize that you are doing this to other people. I guarantee it. And other people are doing that to you. It does happen. Now, the real challenge comes when you start to buy into it. Yeah. Because then, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll doubt ourselves. It, it leads to self-doubt for sure. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of times it leads uh, maybe not even to the self-doubt, but the frustration mm-hmm. that things are not working the way that you want them to be because you're trying to do something that's not right for you. Yeah, it gets really sticky really fast. It does. It could be a goal that mm-hmm. you're going towards. that's just not your goal. And right. I just had this happen with a, with a client the other day, you know, um, set a really healthy goal for this year really, really healthy, like Mm -hmm. for the business and Mm -hmm. for his income and for all sorts of other areas. And along comes a well-meaning friend who's Mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, you're, you know, you're selling yourself short and and all this kind of stuff. And, and he bought into it. Like he really started to buy into that story of selling himself short, that he was selling himself short. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like pooping on the goals that he's already, that he's already set for himself that are beautiful goals that are really right for him. And doubt to them, made them wrong. Ah, it's sticky. And then it starts to get into this. Oh, well, I should be, I should be more, I should be doing this or I should be doing that. And then we should, and should is shame. And Ah. it's, it's super easy to do that, especially when it comes from somebody who's either like a colleague, you know, who, well, and that's one of the things they, they want the best for you. They really do. They, they really want the best for you and really listening to yourself becomes mm-hmm. hard. But when your head and your energy gets so full of that chatter and all those ideas from everybody else, it becomes really, really difficult to hear what is true for you. Exactly. And you can't drop in and then it's, yeah, it gets very sticky, yeah. very heavy. You know, I do think too, that we have to... Be cautious of people. Some people are very well-meaning. Other people kind of just want to instantly coach because they think they know better. And you don't have to be rude to those people. Just thank them and say, I got it, actually. I got it figured out. Like there's so much power in being able to say, I actually have it figured out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good for now. I'm good for now. Let's talk later. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's always a healthy mm-hmm. thing. It's important to stay true to you. Yeah. It, that that voice is not always that loud. Yeah. You know? Sometimes it's just a whisper, but if we ignore it, it doesn't show up yeah, as much. You keep, loud, you keep ignoring it and then it gets louder and yeah. louder and louder. And I, th- you know, I think it comes back to that. I think most people are really, I'd say the vast majority of people are super well-meaning in our lives, whether it's parents or mm-hmm. partners or friends or colleagues or even mentors, you mm-hmm. know, that can go awry with that, that they have really the best in mind for you. But it comes down to the same thing that you were just talking about, which is inquiry, like right. really taking the time to inquire into that and to see if that's right for you. That could be right on. Mm-hmm. It could be right on and the wrong time. Exactly. Right. It, it could be flat out wrong. And just just that's their stuff, you mm-hmm. know, in which case you want to refer to number one and not take it personally. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So here's a way to avoid doing that to other people is to always start something with, Hey, I have an idea. Is it okay if I share? Because asking permission means that they might say, ah, actually, I think I'm okay. Right. Good. Don't take it personally. Cool. Yeah. Right. So you can ask like, Oh, is it okay if I share is then, you know, if they're still in the working process, but if they're done, if they've got it, we don't need to be sharing our ideas to confuse things. Yeah. And to share my own personal experience around that is, you know, I've, I know that you've 
told me certain things about me <laughs> no <laughs> that i didn't really like hearing at the moment you know or that uh were challenging for mm-hmm. me um i don't know i know I, I wish i could say i mean i can lie to our audience and just say i you're not gonna I, lie to I, our I responded audience. just immaculately every single time now he makes a little face he gets a little annoyed it's <laughs> Some, very funny sometimes not always but it took me some time to sit with that mm-hmm. and to really decide mm-hmm. what was right for me. And that's another beautiful way to take feedback. You've got to look at what works for you and what doesn't. And what doesn't work, you let it go. Yeah. It's that simple without taking it. Like, it, notice how all of these are like intertwined. It's yeah. really cool. They do kind of intertwine. Yeah. yeah. Cool. What's next? The next is let go of the need to be right. <laughs> Oh, we've mm-hmm. talked, I think we've done whole episodes on this. We have, yeah. Um, the need to be right. I, I'm i so thrilled that more and more people are understanding about this. It's also a bit of the need to not be wrong. So some of you might resonate with those words more. It's like, oh yeah, I don't want to be wrong. Because usually when I say, oh, you have the need to be right. No, 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 I don't have the need to be right, which actually you do. Um, but some people will hear it differently when it's the need to not be wrong. So letting go of this, it allows your eyes to open up beyond a box that you're in. It allows you to really see beyond the parameters and to notice miracles and opulence and opportunities right in front of you that when you sit in the need to be right, you're going to miss. Yeah, it's it, this one does loop back to what we were talking about in the inquiry when you're so Absolutely. invested in something and then you start defending it. Well, you are definitely in the need to be right. Uh, around that. Yeah. And so it keeps you, it keeps the blinders on. Right. So the biggest thing that I noticed that the need to be right does energetically is a couple things. Mm -hmm. It shrinks your heart. Yeah, totally. It makes it hard and Mm -hmm. brittle. It exaggerates your mental will. For sure. And get really willful, really willful about things. And then now all of a sudden you're projecting your, you know, the way that it's supposed to be onto mm-hmm. everybody else mm-hmm. and and really, you know, enrolling them in things for your, you know, just because you have the need to be right, not because it's necessarily the right thing. Right. And that's a problem. And, and then it has that kind of harsh, brittle energy to it. And what it does is when you meet other people with that is it creates massive conflict because mm-hmm. who do you know in your life that really likes it when they come, when you come into their world and just start telling them everything about, you know, the way that it is. Yeah. Like, how do you like it when yeah. people do that to you? It's so put offing. Right. Off putting, put offing. It's just not fun. Right. And it's a mental construct. Right. So the challenge with that is that, you know, you can soften it in certain ways and that's mm-hmm. nice, but the energy is still pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to get pretty much the same result, which is going to be that person is going to dig into their position. Mm-hmm. And now you're at loggerheads. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make, uh, you'll find to, I feel like if you're in the need to be right, that sometimes you're not real nice with people. Mm. There's a real sharpness. Sharpness, yeah. Um, and direct is good, but a sharpness or kind of just doesn't, it can't really be heard, right? So even when you're trying to convey a point, when you're coming with that energy, sometimes the other people won't hear. No, because they're, defensive yeah their fields up in defensive mode. consciously or unconsciously mm-hmm. they are mm-hmm. they're in a defensive mode and so inside their head they're basically angling to try to protect themselves exactly. or, or prove themselves right right and the deeper that you dig the deeper that everybody digs in now you're in trench warfare what do you suggest to your clients to let go of the need to be right the need to be right is tricky it's real tricky the best thing that you can do with it is to stay really curious. And it comes back, I guess that would be, I think that's his second, the second agreement is like, don't make assumptions. We brushed Mm -hmm. on it here. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that's, that's one is like, don't make assumptions. When you get really, really curious about people and get really good at asking uh, excellent questions, Mm -hmm. you can actually get beyond that and break down that barrier between two people. Mm -hmm. Dealing with it in yourself is a little different. It, it's it, a little stickier. It, it probably requires some 
coaching and healing. And if you're interested, feel free to email us on that one because we definitely work with the need to be right a lot. Yet I do like that, Nick. Stay curious and and remember that whoever you are trying to impart the need to be right on, they're another beautiful human being with a soul. Like when you can connect at a different level, you don't have to be forceful. You can be receptive. You can be receptive. You can be soft. You can be playful even. Playful. Um, All of those energies really help to break that down. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it when you're in it because you're dug in and they're dug in. and Nobody's really, you can say a bunch of words, but nobody's really communicating. And I think one thing is just to stop and say, what if they are right? What if they have a really good point? Like that, that's pulling you out of the quicksand, everyone. But when you can do that and when you can just pause and be like, but what if they are right or they have a really good point and I'm missing it? Yeah. Then you go into automatic curiosity. Right. right. And, and you're, you're like, also, yeah, you're respecting the other person that they might actually have an opinion worth hearing. Yeah. Like, ooh, that's so mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you're right with that as far as the, it's really solving it in yourself. It's, you got to have help. Like it's you got to have a, an objective mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, info it, at source movement.com. Yeah, really need to be right in the subject kind line. Of perspective on that. <laughs> so the last one here. Yeah. Talk about, this is a good one. Well, we're really talking here about, this is, I think one of the simplest mm-hmm. to, to really get to, um, we saved it for last, but it also does have, a, it can have a really profound impact decluttering so to speak your environmental noise Mm -hmm. so a few ideas about that low energy substances so you know like low vibe type of things that you're you know things that are depleting to you sugar yeah martinis yes chocolate cake all all those kinds of things here (laughs) here's something that you can do in just in your environment though you talk about like a low energy type of thing Walk through your house mm-hmm. and just pay attention and you'll know what needs to go. You'll just know. You'll get a hit. Yeah. You'll be like, oh, yeah, that bag of marshmallows, it's got to go. It could be that. It could be your couch. It could be your detergent. Yeah. Yeah. We've certainly removed pieces of furniture at points in time. We're like, it's done. It's got to go. Yeah. It's you, time now. Yeah. So if yeah. you're hanging on to something and you're hoarding it, you know, that's like not going to work. And sometimes just creating that space allows something cool to come in. That's right. Always, actually, it does. It always, yeah. Mm-hmm. It always allows something cool to come in. Um, music. What kind of music are you listening to? Yeah. Or are you listening to music? You know, this one's tricky for me mm. because I love music and I love so many different kinds of music. And like one of my favorite artists, artists is Radiohead. Like I just love... Are they? But they're not low vibe, are they? They're not. I mean, they're not the happiest vibe. <laughs> I got to say, but their music to me is like so interesting and the way that they compose and create together and the different kind of sounds. I think the talent kind of overrides the unhappiness. It, it, it does to a degree Mm -hmm. for me, it does to a degree because I'm so fascinated and just like so inspired by Mm -hmm. what can be created Mm -hmm. um, that I miss some of the, you know, Mm -hmm. don't focus so much on some of the lower vibe aspects Mm -hmm. of it. But yeah, I mean, some of the matter is kind of heavy. Is it? Yeah, it's, I know. I went to that live show and I was a little bit freaked out yeah, by the end. <laughs> ironically, it can be kind of dissonant and things like that. But yeah. I, and I'm not going to stop loving the band. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I do smaller temper that. doses. Yeah, yeah. It's like I do, I have to temper mm-hmm. that, you mm-hmm. know, um, there's a huge difference between that and listening to a Bach cello suite. Yeah. yeah. Or Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> you just love that. <laughs> it's such a great movie. Yeah. I enjoyed, I really yeah. enjoyed the movie. Yeah. yeah I loved it. And I think like, you know, sometimes I'll put on some Krishna Das or I'll put on some Trevor Hall. We've had him on our podcast. Like find something that you're like, oh yeah, I I want to seize this day. Like, I think that's the best way to describe music. Like what lifts you up? Yeah. Not pulling you down to a place where you're in a slump and you're just feeling sorry for yourself and you're going over it again and again. Yeah. That I remember that stop. one of my very first breakups, like way back, way back when, I mean, that was in like high school at the time and it was just like devastating to me. And I just sat there and like, listened to this sad song for oh, so God. long. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just wallowing yeah. in it, you know? You need to stop. But that's what happens, I think, unconsciously, you know. If you're, if anybody out there is like me, where you find a sound or a song that you really 
are just like something is really grabbing you about it, like you can just put it on repeat, but you might not realize what that's doing to your energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's the places where you want to pay attention. And like Kisma said, you know, grab something that really lifts you up. Right. You know, it might not be the same for anybody else, but it might be something that right. for you that's unique that just really helps you feel like, yeah, like I got this. Not exactly. like an aggro kind of way of like, I want to destroy this day. No, we're not talking destruction. But something that really empowers yeah. you. I like it. So I think that's a good one. Um, let's people. see here. People. Yeah, there's what always about people? people. When you're dealing with people, you don't always have a choice about who you're around. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're the, at work or sometimes family, et cetera. Right. In the immediate moment. Mm-hmm. Now, over the longer term, you can make decisions mm-hmm. about that. Um, mm-hmm. But you you have to deal with where you're at exactly in this moment and make the most of it. And honestly, for that, it's, you know, you just need really good energetic right. tools to stay out of their stuff. Right. Um, but over the long term, you look at who you let into your inner circle, what kind of stories they're telling you, you know what kinds of things that you talk about and do as activities. You know, like if you've got a bunch of people that, you know, you just hang out with them every Friday and Saturday and, and, you know, get drunk Mm -hmm. or do whatever you do. That's cool. Like, I'm glad that you can connect. And is that really what you want? Is that really what you want in your life? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying don't do it, but I am saying, Hey, give that a thought. Ponder it. And Mm -hmm. and maybe less. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because it's kind of like, Again, like clearing the space, you know, right. you allow something right higher vibe in. Right. Once it's what about put. TV? TV, okay. TV, movies, <sighs> video games. Another, we got to look at that. This is yeah, we do. Yeah, this is another one that's. <laughs> I know you love Games of Thrones. Tricky. It was Game Game of Thrones. Games, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Thrones. Shame on you! I can't believe so you just shame me. Did you see you just shame me on the like, podcast? Game of Thrones, everybody. <laughs> like how? Do you, like you, you have to know that name. But after that head got burst, I was done. Oh, there was a scene. I don't know what episode where the big guy burst the other guy's head. I was like, I'm out. The mountain. I'm out. Viper. Yeah, I am out. (laughs) Done. You were you were done after that. That was 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 all over. It took me weeks to get that image out of my head. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, But these sorts of things happen on TV all the time. They do. Right. And so this this is one where I'm a little drawn because I Mm -hmm. love a good TV show. Mm -hmm. A couple recommendations. Again, Get some really good energetic tools to clean yourself up Mm -hmm. because that has an impact. It does. I guarantee it. Notice Mm -hmm. how you sleep after you watch a really violent show or film. Um, And, you know, it needs to just get cleaned out. You can do things to mitigate that. If you're watching it on TV, 100% do not listen to the commercials. Oh, no. They're designed to disrupt you. So you mute the commercials always. Yeah. Uh, and really just take a look at where you're willing to go with that. You know, I had a, I had a teacher put it to me really well. One time I was asking about, you know, sugar was one Mm -hmm. of the things, you know, it's like, oh, this, I had the sugar had a bit of a reaction to it. I was like, this kind of sucks, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, the teacher was great about it. She's like, you know, do it, but before you do it, commit to yourself to cleaning it up Mm -hmm. and, what that did for me was really make me rethink that because right. I know what I need to do to clean some of those things up. And it's like, psh, do I really, am I that committed? <laughs> and if you are good for you. <laughs> and, and truthfully speaking, like more often than not, I'm just not that committed to the chocolate cake, you know? Yeah. Right. So that's a, that's a few of them. Um, you can look at other environments, other medias, other yeah. things like that. I think the important thing here is, you know, we talk so much about the internal equals the external. And this is true. The level and frequency vibe of your inner being, of your consciousness, of your field is creating your external. Yet we also have to understand our external will affect our internal That's unless right. we are so freaking resilient. We're, and there are very few people on the planet that can put themselves anywhere and not be affected. That's right. Very, very, very few. Yeah. So most of us at some point, and this is a bit of the danger zone, if you will, is like, we think we got it. We think we got, I'm going out, have a drink. I'm going out and have a drink. Everything's fine until on night four, it's not okay. Right. So it's really understanding like, you're going to do something, you're going to party. Okay, cool. Don't make it consistent really get back into what's a clean environment, really clear, really clean, because that's going to serve you the most. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one last thing I want to talk about here. Um, The episode's running a little bit long, but I think this one's important enough. Mm. 
Facebook. Okay. Or social exactly. media. Exactly. This is a very much a law of karma sort mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. The algorithm reflects what you click on. So if you're <laughs> out there, no, think about it. Now Ooh. you're out there and you're clicking on a bunch of things that make you angry or draw oh. you into conversations that sap your energy and your time. Right. All right. Political discussions mm-hmm. or social issues or like whatever it is. And all of a sudden you're down that rabbit hole. Well, what's Facebook going to do? That click was a yes. That was a yes to anger. So that that's Madness. exactly what it was. And so Facebook's going to be like, oh, they like that. They click that. Let's show them more. Right. So you're going to see more and it's more like of that. Facebook gets in your field. It's an instant frequency bust. Yeah, it is kind of. I yeah. mean, because it's just chaos and, yeah. it, and it's cause and effect. It is designed to well, draw scary. you down into all these little rabbit holes. Mm-hmm. And you have the power to choose. That's right. It's not making Facebook wrong. It's no. just saying like, you know what? This is up to me. Is it like I was talking with a one of my VIP clients and she was commenting on talk about external. She goes, well, when I go visit my family, you know, it's the food they have and the this and that. I was like, hang on a minute. You're a big girl. You can go to the store, get your own food and bring it. That's right. You're in control. Yeah. We are in control as long as we decide to be in control. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I'm glad you said that. It's not to make Facebook wrong. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that makes sense to me. You Mm -hmm. know, you click on stuff and it shows you more of that stuff. I think that's cool. Uh, What, where it goes awry is when people get clicking without thinking, (laughs) clicking without thinking, without really thinking what you're creating Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what you're buying into, because that click is a yes. And just like you said, Kizma, you're, that's a yes to anger right? and scorn and division and all these other things that are not serving yeah. you and your highest mission or our higher mission on the planet. There's cat videos for crying out loud that we could be watching. <laughs> I saw an amazing sloth video today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so there you have it. Fill your life with beautiful kitty and sloth videos and all will be well. And of course, Illumination Podcast. And Illumination Podcast. <laughs> so hey, everyone, if you have any other things to add to the list, go to the show notes, which are uh, illuminationacademy.net forward slash I N K one four six. And there'll be a comment box, sort of like a Facebook looking kind of comment box. Type in there, like some of the things that you know you can clear out, remove any other ideas for our listeners so we can all learn together. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be super helpful. And uh, also give it a share, you know, if you liked it and that uh, meant something to you or, you know, somebody that could use a little uncorroding spiritual detox. (laughs) That's it for the spiritual detox episode. You can always go back, start from the beginning and get a little bit more juju. And until next time, we so appreciate you. Namaste. Peace. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.